Hello, and thank you for joining the webinar, Accelerate SAP ERP Applications by Improving Internet Efficiency. My name is Karina Cooper, and I am one of the Marketing Programs Managers for CD Networks. I will also act as the moderator for today's presentation. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that questions are welcome. Please submit your questions and comments via the chat box. Your questions will be responded to during the last 10 minutes of the presentation. The presentation will also be recorded and distributed to all registrants via email. And now that we've covered the housekeeping rules, I would like to review with you the agenda for today's presentation. After that, we'll introduce our presenters. The first topic will be SAP application trends, the purpose of our proof of concept test, dynamic web acceleration, the test environment and the method, test results, summary, and the Q&A session. Now let's introduce our presenters. George Nolik is the Director of Infrastructure Technologies with SAP Labs, and John King is the Vice President of Business Development with CD Networks. We've covered the general housekeeping rules, agenda, and speaker introductions, and I will now hand off the presentation to our first presenter, Jorg Nolik. Jorg, feel free to begin when you're ready. Yep. Thanks, Corinna, uh, for the introduction. My name is Jorg Nolik, and as we want to talk today about accelerating actually the network for SAP applications, I want to start telling you about SAP applications themselves. SAP is the largest business application vendor in the world. We are known for our enterprise business applications, which are typically run in the data centers of our customers or in the data, center, uh, the, the data centers of hosting partners of our customers. You can regard our application as kind of the Swiss army knife for the business. We have uh, applications like for HR, for sales and distribution, for finance, and everything it actually takes to run a large enterprise. The largest enterprises of our world are the customers, and the total number of our customers is exceeding by now 200,000. So the uh, SAP is that pervasively used across the world that basically most of the global trade happening in the world is at one point uh, of its processing done through SAP systems, um, which is really tremendous and mind-boggling if you think about it. Now, the users of SAP applications are not only the people in the customer's headquarters and around the data center or in the data center, but mostly actually um, SAP applications are accessed from remote locations. Our customers very often have hundreds of remote branches across the world, uh, many of the employees work from home, and of course, uh, on the field side of our customers, their sales representatives and other people are traveling all the time and have to access um, SAP applications while they are on the road. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much known. We do this business since decades. SAP is 40 years old by now. Um, the last years, we tremendously extended our application portfolio by homegrown application as well as through some major acquisitions we did as a company. Um, besides the, the enterprise uh, ERP resource planning kind of applications, we have a strong footage now in SAP analytics, in analytical applications, which are Traditionally, or as analytics started in the world, only used by board people of large companies, um, the C people of a company. Nowadays, they are used by basically any employee to find out um, how the business of the company is doing so that they can basically steer their daily job activities. As well, of course, they are used by the customers of our customers. You know, like so if a customer has an online website of some sort, the uh, customers or a customer might get proposal of products are interesting to them. Typical example would be maybe iTunes from Apple. So if you kind of are their customers, you get proposals of new apps you might want or music you might want all the time. The applications are increasingly based on our new SAP HANA in memory platform. This is an advanced database technology which compared to traditional databases uh, is putting all data in memory instead of accessing it from hard disks all the time. 
and that kind of leads to a tremendous speed up factor of a factor 100,000 times faster, which actually enables us to write totally new applications, to innovate new applications, which just weren't possible before. So all of that is exposed to the customer, uh, to, to the end users. One more thing we did is we acquired the company Cybis, through which we got a strong uh, mobile portfolio, which enables us nowadays to also push out um, data from the SAP applications to mobile end devices, which are increasingly used, of course, by anybody in the world. Uh, the other big trend, uh, which is um, dominating our industry more and more, is, of course, cloud. SAP runs its own cloud, and we have cloud data centers across the world through which we deliver the software as a service application, or as we call them, on-demand applications to customers. So those are applications the customer is not deploying anymore in the data center. Rather, they subscribe to them, and they are delivered by SAP on behalf of our customers to the end users of our customers, our customer, uh, customers of our customers. Now, the since our customers have, since decades, um, invested in their on-premise applications, they also want to have data exchanges going on between the on-premise applications and the SAP cloud applications, on-demand applications. And since um, cloud applications are delivered through the Internet, of course, these integration scenarios are also facilitated through the Internet. So what you can take from these slides is that the blue arrows are, of course, very important to deliver applications of SAP to the end users, to the client of the applications. Without that, nothing works. And that naturally means that we have to demand qualities from the networks from, uh, so that the overall experience is really superior from the SAP side. So what are these qualities? The major one or the number one to mention is reliability. Customers use SAP applications for the business, which means they're absolutely mission critical. If an SAP application is not available, the customer is losing revenue and it might impact their top and bottom line. So customers of SAP spend a lot of effort to harden the application, to make them more resilient, you know, to have high availability in the data center through redundancies that no single point of failure event or so can really bring the system down. The systems need to be available 7 by 24 all year long without disruption. Now, if the network would fail, obviously end users cannot get to the application anymore, and just hardening the applications alone wouldn't be enough. So we need to have also superior network qualities there, and the network needs also to be up and available all the time. Second quality, security. SAP when, for example, um, let's say a sales representative is looking up the list of its customers he might do visit for today, that is absolutely confidential information. This is not the normal Internet applications where, you know, everybody uh, in the world is supposed to see a website and be able to browse it or so. Those are very confidential data, and they need to be secured. So all application traffic over the Internet has to be encrypted. There are authentication schemes that need to be supported and so on. So any network technology for SAP applications also need to be able to provide proper levels of security and advanced security features in many cases. The third quality is performance. Of course, we like the end users of our applications, maybe employees or customers of our customers to like our applications. They need to work with it every day and to have a good acceptance, the performance of application needs to be good. And as you all know, um, if you're in the webinar, wide area networks, the internet has um, really latency time challenges and in some cases bandwidth challenges which need to be overcome. And it needs to be avoided that those wide area network uh, issues are degrading the experience of the, applica in the application experience of our customers. The other point on performance is, of course, um, that um, the, the pace at which customers or end users can work with our applications is determined by the application performance itself. So if the performance of applications better, usually they can get more work done. It impacts their productivity, which is also very important for the efficiency and the success of a large enterprise. 
Now, Synthesis Network is a really important part of the overall end-to-end -end delivery and experience of our applications. SAP works and partners with many network technology vendors, and among them I like to welcome CD Networks. Just recently, we did a proof of concept and technical uh, suitability review of uh, their product offerings for SAP applications. Uh, CD Networks, which distinguishes them from many other network vendors, is actually a network as a service vendor, so they are themselves a cloud vendor. Their service can be um, accessed uh, or is delivered through the Internet itself which means you don't need any software deployments in your data center, you don't need to deploy any appliances, you just need to subscribe to the service and then apply it to your SAP application delivery over the world. How this works in more detail also will be explained by John and for the next section, John, I'd like you to take over. Thank you, Jörg. Um, pictured here is the control room of a Formula One race car team. Just like the person here, IT managers and owners of web applications must keep abreast of how well their applications are performing because seconds count. For race teams, it can mean the difference in winning or losing a race. For companies, it can mean the difference in optimizing revenues and or productivity. Today's enterprise IT teams support revenue streams that are potentially worth millions of dollars. With the global growth of SAP applications, IT teams are often faced with performance issues, unexpected downtimes and delays. On this slide, we have a view of some SAP community network help requests. As you can see here, performance delays are uh, uh, performance delays and unexpected downtimes are common problems associated with this mission-critical application. However, is this really an issue with the application? Or more appropriately, could it be a problem associated with the network or Internet? Because both contribute to the end-user experience. Benjamin Franklin coined the term, time is money. That is even more true in today's digital economy where seconds can mean thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Am I speaking in hyperbole? Actually, I'm not. IT operation leaders and executives are feeling the impact of SAP application downtimes on enterprise revenue. It's probably very similar to how the car owners of, of these cars photographed in the world's most expensive car crash felt when they got the bill for this accident. Average cost of downtime on an SAP system can range between $535,000 and $838,000 per hour. That's the equivalent to $14,000 that is lost uh, by the company every minute the ERP application is down. An hour of downtime could cost approximately $90,000 per hour in the media sector to about $6.5 million per hour for large online brokerages. Downtime also affects productivity. An application or business service that does not perform as expected just 2% of the time represents a 45-hour working deficit. If we take into account the cascading impact of downtime costs, say, on supply chains, those costs may rise to 5 to 10 times those of, of those stated figure, figures here on this chart. The message is clear, just as you wouldn't buy a fast performing race car to see it crash or crawl on, along in traffic, you, you wouldn't want to lose the value of your SAP application because of network problems. Picture here is the, the starting line to a Formula One race car race. Um, the leading cause of race car retirement is engine failure. 
Just as large, powerful engines can fail at a moment's notice, web application downtime can damage how a company can compete in today's marketplace. In order to prevent such catastrophic events from happening, I'd like to introduce CD Network's Dynamic Website Acceleration Service, or what we call DWA. CD Networks is considered a network cloud service. We are an established content delivery network, or CDN, that has been around for 13 years, which is pretty much the genesis of the industry. We specialize in accelerating web content and web applications throughout, throughout the world to any of our 140 plus points of pre presences or POPs. Our strength lies in our global reach and the ability to accel accelerate mission critical applications. We are the only global CDN to have a presence in China and are unmatched in areas like Russia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. This world map or pop map demonstrates the reach of CD Network's architecture and the focus placed on optimizing performance in the world's most challenging markets. Now to talk to you a little bit specifically about our global or our uh, dynamic web acceleration service, our DWA service creates a fast, secure tunnel over the internet. The technology allows us to accelerate dynamic content over the internet between the nearest serving POP to the data center where the application is being hosted and the closest POP to the end users. There's no hardware or software to purchase as it is 100% a managed cloud service. The benefit is that remote employees, suppliers, and customers can access the web applications much faster than they would have uh, without the service. And a faster site or application translates to more revenues or higher productivity. Most importantly, the service eliminates a bad user experience that could have occurred due to severe network latency. The reality of the internet is that it's not a perfect medium. There are internet inefficiencies. When it comes to enterprise applications, uh, the one we see most often is that the further away you go from the data center where the application is hosted, the longer the application response time is. Um, so if you have, say, a uh, an application being hosted in Denver, the application response time can be in excess of 25 seconds, say, from, you know, from China. So, uh, and, um, excuse the chart, but the, the line of the internet inefficiency is obviously the, the, the line between the top of the, the bar on the far right uh, to, the, to the green horizontal line. So that, that represents the internet inefficiency. So because obviously the, the users that are close uh, in Denver uh, or to the Denver data center are the ones that uh, would would see the very you know fast application response times, but again, the further away the user base is from that Denver data center, uh, the the longer the application response time is, and that's what we term the internet inefficiency. Our DWA service solves for this inefficiency. At this point, I'd like to hand it uh, back to York. Uh, to share more about the, the POC testing that we did with SAP Lab. Yeah, thanks, John. So in the next section also, I want to tell you um, what we did in the proof of concept project I mentioned at the beginning with CD Networks. Um, we used our SAP Co-Innovation Lab facility in Palo Alto, California um, as uh, the on-premise kind of data center. So the Co-Innovation Lab in Palo Alto is a dedicated lab uh, SAP runs to do such projects with all of our partners. 
Uh, and we host typical SAP application in that facility. We can expose them to the Internet and then have basically tests done there with uh, partners. Um, how does this work? We had two test cases there in the lab implemented on the NetWeaver portal, which is one of our many applications, just as an example. Um, the NetWeaver portal itself is like an integration hub for the users to access all other SAP applications. And it typically um, has like login, so transactional steps where you click to get from one page to another. It can help also uh, like large downloads and those were the two test cases there we had. For the test also, we measured, um, we first of all exposed them to the internet such that secure traffic is provided, so we looked to security. Uh, we wanted to measure the performance we are seeing and um, we wanted to also have a check on the reliability on that. We did the test at the beginning of this year in February timeframe. Uh, and as I said, we, we used the Conovation Lab in Palo Alto, so California is the location, basically. We collected then data from remote end users, which were simulated through a service from the company Gomez, uh, which has a nice advantage that we could, without that we needed to fly there, also have tests going on against our data center in California from many different locations over the world. Um, and the Gomez service then collects all the test data so that we can look to the results. Mm. On the next slide, you see the, the mm, log-on screen of the SAP NetWeaver portal, and we kept the test scenario simple. It doesn't take much to test it, but it's very important to have the right deployment done and the right setup done and to combine the partner products with the SAP products in this case. So our test was very simple. The first thing a user will do in the morning when they use the NetWeaver portal is frankly to log in. And after the login, after they submit their credentials over HTTPS, of course, and in a very secure manner, they would get to something which we call the welcome page, which is basically uh, like a portal page, like, like the Yahoo portal page of an enterprise, basically, where you have then further jump points to all other applications that you can do. As you can imagine, large enterprises have a lot of stuff on their welcome page, so the welcome page is maybe something um, which downloads a lot of information and therefore is vulnerable to network latencies a lot, which can slow down these information downloads. Uh, once we have the welcome page done, also we logged out again and we did this in iterations many times over to get performance data. The performance data we looked into in particular is the one of step B, you know, the first experience a user has in the morning when they get to the basically portal page of their company, of their employer. So it's very important that this is performing well. The other use case we picked is downloading a large documents. I mean, I guess all of us are very familiar and heavy user of things like Microsoft Office, where we write Word documents, where we read email, um, do Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoints, all of that. Typically nowadays, these documents are in the few megabyte range. So we kind of emulated what does it take to download a five megabyte PowerPoint uh, from the enterprise portal to whatever remote location an end user is in. So those were our two test scenarios. So next I can show you some results. Uh, for the first scenario, the welcome page, we found um, this response time. So what you see there is that the response time in the US are low, so barely above a second. And I can tell you if you would be close to Palo Alto, there would be sub-seconds. Um, you see blue and red bars. So for comparison reasons also, we first measured the response times we see on our applications just going via the internet without CD network service. And then in the second run, we checked out how things are when we accelerate the traffic through CD network. So we routed to the next endpoint uh, CD network has in America, close to Palo Alto basically. And then they had the other 140 endpoints across the world, which are then close to the end user, which were emulated through the Gomez service. So by that, we got this comparison graph, and you can easily see that there's big acceleration. First of all, you see that if you just use the Internet, the red bars, as far as you go away from our location in Palo Alto, 
as large as the response times get. And uh, like in China, we have a case where we almost reach 10 seconds response times, and as I said, in Palo Alto, in the data center, our response times are sub-seconds. So there's a more than tenfold degradation of the performance if you go really to far away locations in the world. And of course, we would recover at least some of this performance degradation, and CD Network is doing an excellent job here. We found that averaged across the world, we saw like a little bit more than a factor two improvements of the response times. Um, if you look to the worst locations, of course, the improvement is almost kind of reaching a factor of four in, uh, improvements there, which is like 80% improvement or so, which is really tremendous for such a simple use case of just, you know, like getting um, to a busy welcome page of our customer. The other thing which I like to point out in the slide um, is that the experience, oops, it's just covered up, <laughs> but you can just see it, that the experience of end users in terms of response time becomes more equal across the world. So if you have, let's say, some people in your enterprise traveling from your home location to a far away location, they don't really notice that there's so much internet challenge in between them. CD networks makes a response time in China, China, let's say, equally or not equally, but almost as good as the uh, uh, response times they have in the home base. So the experience for all end users is equally pleasant across the world, which is also very important to have this consistency. Okay. Um, the next slide just shows a little bit aggregation of this busy slide we had before with the many cities mentioned in small print. Um, if you look to different regions of the world and in particular to the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, which are like the countries where most of our customers have a lot of branches or maybe a lot of operations meanwhile and where actually also a lot of big companies are coming up. Um, BRIC countries are most challenged by internet performance as you can see in those graphs and CD network shows more than a factor two improvements in particular for those important group of countries. Okay. Next slide is just the same as before. It kind of looks like the slide I showed before, but you might notice that on the time y-axis also, the numbers are much higher, reaching up instead of 10 seconds up to 40 seconds, and that is because of the second use case. So in this case, we downloaded the five megabyte document I mentioned, and such downloads can take a lot of time. I mean, it's reaching up to the minute range I have seen in some other tests done or so, which, which is quite long. So an employee in China, when they click on the download five megabyte document, they have enough time to get a coffee, basically. And that is, of course, not kind of increasing the productivity of people there. Versus in the US, the challenge is much less. I mean, they have response time of maybe five seconds or so, which is still quite long. Now, with CD networks, a lot of this performance loss is less, uh, especially, again, in the remote locations you get down to from 40 seconds to 10 seconds, like a factor four improvement. In average, for this case, we found an improvement of almost a factor three, which really helps productivity. You don't have this nasty wait time, which are very often idle time and reduce productivity of your workers. Um, again, on this slide, you see the aggregation by regions in the world and the BRIC countries are showing, again, as the top use case where these improvements give you the biggest gains, but also all other regions see very good improvements. Okay. Now, this is just performance focus. We wanted also to look to the other qualities, like here we did a stress test. So we run 200 users in total against the SAP systems. The 200 users were um, distributed around the world, and what you see here are their average um, um, or the aggregated, basically, transaction um, throughput. So here we see how many transactions can be done by the end users with using just the Internet versus using CD networks. And what you see is the number of transactions done uh, through our test times is significantly higher by maybe 30% or so, or even more, now 50%, I would say, compared to the just Internet case. And the reason for that is actually, again, the reduction of uh, wait times the end users have from poor performance of the application. So if the application is responding faster to the end user, the end user can read the content 
earlier and make a decision and do the next click on what they want to do faster than before. And that is driving up the number of transactions, which is a direct kind of measure of the productivity of the workers. So I think uh, productivity gain of the worker by 50% will be very welcome by our customers. Uh, in this graph, we look to the response times just to um, confirm what I said before. The performance here we picked from one far away location, so, so it's greatly improved. Also, the choppiness you see in the upper line, the red line from just using the Internet or so, um, is, is reduced. The Internet itself is not a constant. The Internet performance itself is fluctuating by wide ranges sometimes and see the networks through routing traffic through their dedicated networks on the Internet or so um, is solving this shoppiness problem. Again, again, the consistency of the application experience over time is enhanced. The next slide is really my favorite of the whole presentation. Uh, there we go. Uh, um, it shows a comparison of um, the uh, error rates. So here you see a test where at the beginning we ramped up to 200 users again across all locations over the world and then run the application steady on this high load level for a constant time. And after about 20 minutes, we stopped the test and ramped it down again. So in the case where we just were going plain over the Internet or so, you see that we achieved around 1,700 uh, transactions got done in that time. But what is remarkable is that actually we had 52 failures. So this is about a 4% failure rate. A failure means that for some reason um, the application was not responding on a click an end user is doing in this web application anymore. And very often it happens that the user actually loses the session context of it, which means basically they have to kind of go back to the login screen, log in again, and then kind of do a few clicks until they're at the same point what they did before. And then usually the second time they try it succeeds, but they have to do a lot of extra work to get there again. So again, productivity is in maybe 4% of the cases lost, and, and they have to do much more again. So in the same done, test done accelerated through the CD network's offerings shows two remarkable things. First, the total number of transactions in this case, uh, in this very far away remote location, was almost fourfold. We have done more than 7,000 transactions in the same time, not due to the enhancement of response time as I showed it before. But the other thing which is very remarkable is that there was not a single error. So we did basically four times the work for these remote locations with no errors where we had 4% error rate before. And this shows that the reliability, I pointed out, as one of the most important um, qualities our customers need for SAP applications is greatly enhanced. Reliability is not a black and white thing, so it is not always only a matter, is the application up and running or is there a total downtime? There's also these cases where when you use them over the Internet, 4% of the time you do something, something drops out. So this, this is kind of a gray situation between totally available and totally unavailable. Uh, which is very typical, I think, for using the Internet. And if we get these 4% failure rate removed, I think the reliability is greatly enhanced. And at the same time, as I said, the productivity is enhanced through the highest report. With that, um, we are, I believe, at the end of the presentation or getting close to the end of the presentation. I'd like to give a brief summary of what we saw. Applications of SAP are absolutely vision critical to our customers, um, and they need accelerated networks. The good application performance we achieved on SAP, which nowadays is typically in the sub-second range, should not be degraded through wide area networks if possible, and it is necessary to mitigate um, the Typical degradation of performance you will get when you just use uh, the plain Internet through the network technologies of our partners. And we have shown that for the, using the CD network or with using the CD network services, you get an average of a two-fold improvement. Mm. This translates in 
a 30 to or more percent increase of transactional volume done. So this is directly a measure for the productivity of the end users using the SAP applications, uh, <clears throat> as I said before. And we enhanced at the same time the reliability, occasional errors, typically users of the internet experienced are 100% removed if you use the city network uh, service. And we did all the testing nonstop in both cases, just with secure traffic. Um, so all security needs are supported as well when you use the network service. Mm. Consistency, I pointed it out as well. Uh, typically, you have a strong dependence on the application experience from basically the distance uh, to the data center as well as to the local quality of networks in different countries. Um, a lot of these changes you see with distance and quality of local countries, like in BRIC countries I mentioned, are also mitigated through the C network service. With that, I'd like to kind of uh, call in John and Corinna again uh, and open maybe the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Jorg, and thank you, John. So we do have a couple of questions that we would like to take from attendees. Our first question is for John, CD Networks. Does CD Networks monitor or view the information that goes across the network? We want to basically protect our sensitive financial information. So um, the information that, that's sent across the network is absolutely secure. Um, uh, we, uh, much like uh, FedEx, doesn't look inside the, the package when they expedite you know, a delivery of a package. We, we don't look inside, you know, the, the content of that information. So, yes, um, the information is secure. Uh, it's, you know, 100% uh, safe to utilize our service. And uh, we have many uh, financial customers uh, that, that uh, currently use our service. Thank you, John. A couple yeah. more questions. Corinna, maybe I can pitch in here. Sure. In this POC, we didn't exchange any certificates with CD networks, so um, we, the traffic we had in our test also was leaving our Palo Alto data center encrypted, and we didn't give CD networks the key to decrypt it. The decryption was just happening in the browser. So I think the information is totally secure. What we might explore in some future events also is actually um, using giving CD networks also abilities to temporarily decrypt the traffic just because then you can have greater uh, performance improvement. But that would be then a customer's decision if they want to kind of do a trust relationship with CD network servers for the benefit of larger performance improvements or if they would like to use just the already very good performance improvement CD network has if you don't share a certificate and just accelerate it, secure traffic as it is. That's great. I'm sure SAP customers are happy to hear that. Um, the next question, uh, another one for John, you're up. Uh, we have users in Brazil. Can the CD Network's uh, SAP acceleration solution help there? Um, absolutely. Um, and I think uh, uh, during your portion of the presentation, uh, we showed uh, uh, performance data um, from, from Brazil and, and South America. So uh, yes, uh, you know, again, we have over 140 POPs worldwide uh, that spans 84 cities and six continents. So um, yes, Brazil is definitely covered as well as uh, all the other BRIC uh, nations and emerging markets. Great, thank you. And our last question for the webcast, John, how complicated is it to get testing done to see if there are any performance improvements with our SAP application uh, using your solution? Um, it, it's not very difficult uh, at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, uh, your you may be able to to uh, maybe talk a little bit about it, but you know, really, you know, very briefly, we're, we're able to to set up a, a test or a POC very very quickly, and uh, you know, again. We use uh, third-party uh, verification tools like Gomez to, to look at, you know, the test results and to, to measure the performance. Uh, and so, uh, again, it's not very difficult for us to do and to set up yeah. and to get results. 
I mean, we, we had a little bit preparation to just logistics to organize the events, but the pure testing was done within five days. You know, like we have just reserved one week in our co-innovation lab location also to do the testing. And that was sufficient, I think. I mean, we, we got all the tests done we wanted to do in that time. That's great. Well, now we'd like to thank our presenters, Bjorg Nalik with SAP Labs and John Kang with CD Networks. Thank you so much, and thank all of our attendees. Um, we will send out a recording of this presentation via email within the next week. Thank you. Have a great day.